in iPhone.com back at you today. And uh, as you can see, <clears throat> we have a very strange setup today. Um, we are going to be recording um, some actually editing. Um, a number of you have uh, asked me since I got my MacBook Air, Tom, how is it in video editing? How does it work? You know, is it good with video editing? Does it slow? You know, whatever it may be. And quite honestly, those were some of the questions that I had before I got my MacBook Air. So um, I'm going to do what you guys asked. You guys wanted to see how it is to edit on the MacBook Air. Okay, and this is a MacBook Air 13 inch, 256 gigabytes um, Samsung uh, SSD with four gigs of RAM and the Intel Core i5. So this was something very interesting to me. I wasn't sure how it was going to perform. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to spend a lot of money and then a get something that I wasn't going to be able to, uh, use effectively. So anyway, we're going to have this video of me editing a different video. So what I've done already is I've already imported, um, some clips. I imported two clips and I imported this zoom clip here and oh, you guys may be asking Tom, why aren't you guys just doing this on a screenium, uh, and you know, screen flow it. Well, I want it to be true to how you are going to be using your Mac when you are doing editing and have open the apps that you would have open when you're editing and having Screenium or ScreenFlow or some screen capturing software open while you're doing editing. Um, it's just not realistic. You usually don't do screen flow while you're editing. You usually have a couple of things open. Obviously you're going to have final cut pro X open. You're going to have the messages open. You're going to have probably an internet browser open. You're going to have your mail app open and you may have something else open, but those are the three here. We even have Twitter open. So we'll have Twitter open. So we have final cut pro 10. We have, uh, the messages beta, iMessages beta safari, the, um, Apple mail app and, uh, the Twitter client. So that's how we're going to test this. And as you can see up at the top here, I don't know if you can see this or not. It's a little bit out of frame, but, uh, I have what's called free memory running and I have 1.03 gigabytes of free memory. Okay. And I've got a bunch of stuff. Oh, sorry about that. I've got a bunch of stuff running at the top, like uh, Dropbox, cinch, growl, and uh, time machine and blah, 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 everything else. Okay. So anyway, um, I've already imported two clips. I've imported the uh, audio clip and I've imported my video clip. So what we're going to do first is we are going to uh, combine both of these. Okay. And we are going to go to clip and synchronize clips. Okay, and then it's going to synchronize the two clips. Okay. And uh, it's doing its thing there. Okay. So we have a new project set up. And uh, actually, let's kind of delete this project and let's set up a, uh, a new one. We're going to go file, new project. It's going to be uh, air edit. Editing on air. Okay, starting time code 1080p. Uh, let's do 1080p. And let's go uh, 30 frames per second. And uh, audio render properties use the default settings. Let's do custom. We're going to go surround. I believe that's what we've been using. And Apple ProRes 442. I think that's all the uh, all the settings that we've been using, but I'll double check that. This is not about settings. It's about showing you how it edits. So then we click OK. And uh, here we have our synchronized clip. Okay, so now we're going to drop that into the timeline and we're going to uh let's kill this scrub sound and we're going to go to audio okay we're going to have to analyze the audio so it's going to be analyzing the audio while we're doing that we're going to open dropbox okay. and we're going to take our uh, bmai intro and drop that into the timeline and we're going to take our outro movie Drop that into the timeline and we'll move it into the proper position in a second. And we're going to take our outro music because I like the uh, separate clip so I can move music around. Okay, so we're done with that. And uh, let's take the outro and let's move it to the end here. And then we'll go back and get the outro music and we'll move that to the end. 
and we'll piddle around with that a little bit. Okay. Now, as you can see, we're going to uh, need to mess around with the audio a little bit. And but let's grab one more clip. Let's do this. Uh, let's also grab our logo. Uh, no background logo. And let's grab that. Let's throw it right there. Okay, we're done with that now. And then we are going to uh, select this. And as you can see, it's starting to render. It's rendering pretty quickly. We're going to crop this. And we will move it. Oh, we're done cropping. And then we will move the logo and we'll put it in this corner here. Grab the logo and move it in that corner there. Okay, so we've got the logo cropped. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller there. I think that's a good size. And then I'm going to move it into the corner a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so, so far so good. I mean, I've got 412 megabytes free. Uh, the fans are kind of going a little bit. Let's check iStat. Okay, let's let uh, iStat Pro come up. The fans are going at 5,800 RPM, so the fans are going pretty fast. I haven't had the fans uh, going this fast before on this unit, and we're at a uh, 93% CPU. Let's go back here, and uh, let's see here. Now let's see if okay, audio is done. So we're gonna scroll down here. We're going to take the audio, and we have channels here, and and we are going to take out the camcorder audio. I always record camcorder and zoom just in case anything happens with the zoom audio, and we're going to stretch this out. And go all the way back here I guess I could have shortened it up a little bit and then we're gonna go to um, show video animations we're gonna go to opacity and I'm gonna fade this in and out so we're gonna grab this and it's still performing pretty good it's not too bad we're gonna grab that opacity we're gonna go all the way over here we're gonna grab this opacity so it fades in and out Okay. Oh, cool. Mommy got you something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Close the door. As you can hear, uh, the kids are uh, all excited because my wife's home from her business trip and uh, she brought some toys and stuff. Okay. We're going to adjust this audio a little bit. Okay. We are also going to adjust the outro audio. And we're going to fade this out a little bit. We're going to do S curve. We're going to fade that in. Okay, we're going to fade it in about there. Now let's uh, check out the how the audio is. As you can see, still rendering. Okay, and I always like to add compressor to it. It just seems to uh, make it, uh, I don't know, it just sounds a little bit better. It kind of deepens it up a little bit, kind of makes everything really good. So we got compressor. Right, we have looked at in the past. Um, today we're going to be... Uh, okay, so, so far so good on the audio. And uh, really, I'm all I've got left, guys, is to uh, add in some titles there. And uh, really, I'm about done. So as you can see, uh, the MacBook Pro... Um, edits just pretty it, it, darn good actually I was kind of surprised it edits just great um, especially since I have 12 gigs of RAM on my iMac and I only have 4 gigs of RAM on this and uh, this seems to be just as speedy if not more than my iMac uh, 2011 iMac so that is just kind of a sampling of the uh, video editing on the um, MacBook Air um, I'm not sure exactly what else that we can do besides, you know, export it 
exporting is going to be you know about the same so we'll wet, let that render and then we'll export it and we'll come back and see how fast that this exports so we'll uh we'll be back okay guys so uh this finished up rendering and everything and now uh what we're going to do is we're going to do the final part of this and we're going to export it we're just kind of going to see how long it takes to export we're at uh 11 15 p.m now we're going to export this and uh let's see video and audio we're going to do h264 and we will go next so air edit and this is a uh seven minute video so we'll see how long this takes and uh we'll time lapse this so we don't have to sit here and watch the whole thing by ourselves so we'll be right back so guys that edit's done and it took about uh nine minutes so about the same amount of time as it did on the imac so um to kind of end this up and kind of finish this up the macbook air does just fine editing in a uh, final cut pro 10. Uh, I didn't have any problems with it, no uh, beach balls of death, none of that type of stuff. So if you're kind of looking at getting a MacBook Air and you're kind of hesitant because you're going to be doing a lot of editing on Final Cut Pro 10, um, I really wouldn't worry about that. So guys, if you have any questions, uh, shoot me an email. It's Tom Moshe at buymeaniphone.com. Okay, uh, as always, follow us on Twitter. It's twitter.com slash buymeaniphone. If you want to follow me personally, it's twitter.com slash nerf squeezer. Guys, I hope that this video helped you out. And uh, again, let me know if uh, you have any other questions or need to know anything else about uh, MacBook Air performance, and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. So guys, remember, tell the ones you love you love them today. And until the next video, we'll see you then. Have a great day.